to get started, um, I would just like to first say thank you all for taking the time out to come to my session. Um, I hope your weeks are going a little better, um, especially since uh, you're all able to attend this really cool um, virtual conference um, with all things open source. Um, sorry, just one second. Uh, my name is Jenna Ritten. I'm a developer advocate at IBM. Um, I do a lot of work with uh, cloud developer, API tooling, um, blockchain. Um, I've been doing a lot with uh, some Watson Studio features like Auto AI. Um, I primarily work in React and um, Python and JavaScript um, and PHP. Uh, and this is my social media handle, so feel free to connect with me on Twitter, LinkedIn, um, YouTube. I've been live streaming a lot of my uh, workshops more recently, um, so you'll be able to find them there as well. Um, one thing I would like to do is for all of you to just take a second and answer these questions about yourself in the chat um, so we can all kind of get to know each other. Um, maybe you connect, can connect with someone else who's um, in the session. Um, maybe they're from the same city. Maybe you're interested in the same topics. Um, so for example, my name is Jenna. I'm a cloud developer advocate at IBM. Um, I'm currently joining from Detroit. So I'm from Detroit. Um, I work in Austin. Um, I'm here for the time being, working from home. Um, something I love uh, are my dogs, which you probably heard growling and fighting with each other. Um, I have little Yorkies, and they just refuse to ever be tired for some reason. Um, and a quirk, so something that's uniquely weird or different about you. So um, uh, for myself, um, I have an obsession with uh, tuna, so tuna salad sandwiches, tuna melts. If it's on a menu, I feel compelled to order it. I just can't help myself. Um, and if it's not very good, I do not end up returning to that particular place. So thank you all for um, sharing where you're joining from, some of your students, some of your professionals. Um, this uh, workshop is for everyone, so it's not uh, particularly for data scientists. However, it can um, exponentially help them do their jobs. It's not specifically for developers. However, this is a way for someone with little to no data science uh, background or experience can get up and running quickly using uh, AI machine learning um, tooling um, and having a lot of the back-end data science uh, uh, automated and done for you um, by IBM Watson and allow you to deploy your models and incorporate them and integrate them into your personal projects. So to get started, This is the link for the slides. I've posted it in the chat. I also will be posting uh, uh, the links and resources and a slide as well with them at the end of the session. So uh, do not worry, um, you have time. And this is the um, link to create an IBM Cloud account if you don't already have one. Um, a an IBM, Cloud, an IBM Cloud account is required in order to uh, work through the entire workshop. However, um, uh, you will be signing up for a free light tier, so it's at no cost to you, and you can take advantage of um, all of the different uh, offerings we have in our um, IBM Cloud catalog um, with the uh, light tier option. So you might be thinking, you know, I, I don't know AI or machine learning, right? Like, I don't really know um, where to get started. I don't really know what these things are. Um, so we're going to kind of look at that today from a more high level and show you how to just get up and get starting without getting uh, too into the weeds. Um, 
Yes. Thank you, Todd. Um, if you need any, if you need anything, uh, feel free to message Todd or any of the other, um, uh, any of the other organizers if you need help with anything. Um, yeah. So this is a, this is a, a quick start to get you up and running um, uh, without getting too much into the weeds or having to learn too much about um, AI and machine learning uh, beforehand. So think of machine learning as a sophisticated if else statement. So if you're a developer, you're writing and you're writing functions and trying to build out applications um, or APIs, you're writing a lot of these if else statements, right? So what you're doing is you're giving data, feeding data um, into Watson Studio to, you'll be creating a uh, custom machine learning model that'll serve as a sophisticated if else statement. So if um, it receives some data, um, it will process that a certain way, else it will do something else, right? So what we're doing is we're giving it data so um, it can try an assortment of algorithms to optimize the model um, so that it can make those determinations for you. If you're a data scientist, you probably have spent days, weeks, or months um, building your own uh, machine learning models. Um, writing writing algorithms to create and generate those models. It can be very time consuming. Um, Watson can uh, uh, take a lot of the burden off of you and do that very quickly for you. So machine learning in a nutshell is just uh, a way to make data useful, right? You have all of this data and what do you do with it? So machine learning is a way to take that data and really put it into action so that you can use it um, uh, in your own projects or at your own companies. Um, and I will be showing you uh, an example in just a second. And AI is just intelligence without human intervention, right? We want to create models. And what I mean by models are a model is um, something that you can feed data to, and it will give you a predictive response. Um, so what we want to do is um, uh, do that very quickly and easy, easily. Um, AI, um, essentially the purpose of AI is to be able to uh, demonstrate and display some sort of, some form of intelligence and um, uh, actualization of data without us as developers or data scientists having to intervene uh, too much to get them to the right answer. So Watson is a question answer system. So we can give it data. It will um, try different uh, algorithms and um, uh, hyperparameters and different ways of optimizing to create the model. It will do all of that testing for you um, so that essentially you can feed it data and it will give you uh, a highly accurate response. So Watson Studio is going to be your one-stop shop for your AI machine learning needs for your teams or individually if you're working on projects at home. And so we're going to get started. Um, so let me just uh, change my view here. Okay. Just a moment. Oh, let's see here. Change my view. Oops. What about that? No, okay, here we go. No.
to cut out this just one second. Okay. Sorry, I'm having uh, some, some screen sharing issues. Okay. Yes, I'm on Firefox, but it keeps turning off for some reason. Oh man, okay. Um, So, I apologize everyone, just uh, a moment, I'm going to try something else because it keeps shutting off my, um, my screen. Okay, so. okay. Screen two. Okay. Um, okay. Perfect. You're all able to see. Uh, I hope. Um, IBM Cloud login. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much for your patience. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to log in to uh, my. IBM Cloud account. Um, this is a personal account, not a work account. So you will be able to um, see what uh, real expectation for you um, will look like. Okay, perfect. All right. So, um, oh. Okay. All right. We're good. Um, so if you don't already have an IBM Cloud account, please use the link that links that I posted near the top um, to set that up. Um, again, you can also, uh, I will give you access to the slides so you can do this at home. Um, it does take some time to, um, uh, for the models and things to finish uh, generating. Um, but I, I do want to show you. So when you create your, um, your Cloud account, uh, this is the dashboard you will see. So what we're first going to do um, is uh, uh, open up our Watson Studio. So as you can see, I already have Watson Studio uh, instance running because I've already done this before. Um, for those of you, uh, you, this is what you would see from the catalog results. You can also search in the catalog here. Um, so I'll select Watson Studio here. 
and um, you will need to create a new uh, instance of Watson Studio. Uh, and that's what this looks like here. So as you can see, um, you can only have one instance of Watson Studio in the light plan. Um, if you have an up upgraded account, you can have more than one. That's fine. Um, so I'm going to just go to my instance of Watson Studio that I have here. I'll open this up. So just while that's loading there for a moment, um, just so I can show you um, what you will see. Oops. If you don't already have an account, here's the link. You will be creating an IBM Cloud free light to your account. And this is what that will look like when you go to sign in. Um, so what I'm going to show you here is this here's my Watson Studio. I want to get started. So let's all pray that the uh, demo gods are in my favor today. Is running a little slower than usual. I think I'm just, we have too much going on with the internet right now. Okay. I'm not really sure. Uh, things are moving very slowly at the moment. So, plan B. I have everything screenshotted so we can go through it. Perfect. So this is what we'll, you'll see when you open up your um, instance of Watson Studio. And you're going to click create a new project. So I'm going to call, I, I actually ran through all of this earlier today just to double check and make sure all of my documentation was updated and, and uh, up to date. Um, so uh, we're going to create a new uh, auto AI experiment uh, from blank. And you can give it a name. Um, for, for reference, in this instance, the data set we, were, we are going to use is um, data set from uh, the survivors of the Titanic. So let me just call my experiment um, the name of the session, predict the future with Watson Studio Auto, Auto AI. Um, and then you'll be brought here. So what the first thing you're going to need to do is add a data source. Um, the data source, the uh, titanic.csv file, you can find um, in the uh, GitHub repository, um, which I also posted in the chat. Um, so once you, uh, you'll need to download that locally to your computer. And so what you can do here is um, you can uh, browse um, for that data. Um, you'll need to select uh, your asset. Um, and so we're, I've, I've already uploaded this data set into my um, Watson Studio instance and my, in my new experiment that I started. Um, so what I, can, what I did here was I'm selecting it, um, uh, my data set um, from, a, from, an, from a, a project. So um, here I'm adding my data source that I've already uploaded. Um, and what we're looking at here, we want to configure this data so that um, we can optimize it, um, and there's a lot of ways to customize, which I will show you um, for this experiment. So um, for reference, 
you know, some of you that are new that are like, what does this mean? What does this data look like? Like, wh what are these things? Um, where do I find this stuff? Um, I do have some links in the um, uh, resource, resource section of my slides as well um, to uh, share with you as well. So you can th use things like Craggle and Google Scholar. Um, but this is what our data looks like. So we have um, which class people were in. And these are um, all of the people on the Titanic. So um, uh, we have um, survived or not survived is just a binary classification. So we have one for survived, zero for not survived. We have their uh, which class ticket they bought, their name, their sex, their age. And then they looked at whether or not they had siblings or spouses on board and how many. So this person had three, this person didn't have any, this person had four. And then if they had parents or children on board. So this person had two, this person had five. And then what fare they paid. Um, so this is an example of what uh, a good set of data looks like to feed into a, um, a model. And again, this is um, in the GitHub repository for you to download. Uh, with one click as well. Um, let me go back here. Perfect. So the next step we're gonna do, um, what do we? What do you wanna predict, right? So um, this has been optimized as well, so it's easier for you to use. Um, so uh, what we need to determine here is what do we wanna predict? We wanted to predict um, whether or not um, they survived, right? So um, we are going to choose uh, survived. Uh, it is an integer and it's a binary classification. Um, and then uh, what we can do next is it's a little cut off here. Um, there's a um, settings here for our data. So we can further configure our data sets. So if you, as you can see now, uh, we have this by bi uh, prediction type binary classification, right? Positive class is one. That's all been um, entered in on its own um, automatically, just in selecting what we want to predict. Uh, the optimized metric is ac for accuracy. Um, there we go. So when we click uh, that the um, bottom left button, uh, we can come into our experiment settings. So click, click on prediction, uh, we can take a look at our positive class here. So for instance, if you um, uh, needed to change this uh, for any reason, um, you can also change what, which algorithms you would like to test. Again, this is default. Um, uh, yes, okay. Um, so you can choose which algorithms you would like to test. However, this has already been optimized for you. It's already, uh, uh, it has de a default optimized setting set for you, but you can go in here and change it and customize it, um, get a, a lot more hands-on um, with your uh, experiment settings that you would like to run. What I'm gonna choose here is this ROC -A AUC. So this is gonna measure how well a parameter um, can ex um, distinguish between two groups. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this is AUC ROC, ROC is a binary classification and it's one of the most important evaluation metrics for checking any classification model's performance. So um, I'm going to select this. Um, this is a simple uh, uh, um, binary classification problem. So we just want, we don't want to predict how old someone is or how much money they spent. We're just predicting whether or not they survived. Um, so I'm going to choose the ROC, optimized metric ROC AUC here. And so I've done that in the experiment settings and then I can select run experiment. And essentially this is the view that you're going to see. So it will tell you your auto AI uh, experiment run has started um, based on the size of the training set and configuration. This run could take some time. Um, so essentially, um, 
So auto AI is going to predict the survivors of the Titanic for us. So first we load the data sets from our titanic.csv uh, file. Next, we select the survive column like we just did. Um, depending on the type of variable we wanna predict, uh, which as we already discussed, we want it to uh, uh, select, uh, we wanna predict survival rate. So we wanna predict who survived, whether or not they survived. Um, uh, so it, auto AI is then going to automatically select the, the metrics to, metric to optimize we went in and changed it to AUC ROC. Um, so in this case, since it's a binary classification problem, we selected that AUC ROC. Uh, behind the scenes, the tool is gonna split the data um, into training and holdout sets for you. Uh, now, if you are someone that's in data science, this is something that you would uh, regularly need to do yourself. Um, Watson Studio will uh, uh, separate the data um, into training and holdout sets for you, so you do not have to do that. You can just upload the data that you want to test and um, generate a custom model from. Um, so it then it's gonna apply threefold cross-validation um, to evaluate the viability of numerous estimators. So as you can see, we, um, uh, we looked at all of the different algorithms that we can test. Uh, we have all of them selected at the, at the moment. Um, so it's gonna uh, evaluate the viability of numerous estimators in order to predict new and unseen data. So essentially what we're gonna do, and I'll show you once we get to the end here, we're going to feed our model new data, and then it's going to give us a prediction based on what it's learned um, from uh, evaluating uh, the data that we fed it um, and training it with uh, uh, Watson Studios, um, algorithms and uh, different um, hyperparameters selected for optimization. So next, the tool is gonna generate pipelines using hyperparameter tuning and feature engineering for each estimator. So here you can see, and, and as this runs, it will show you which part of the process, is, process it is in. So here it's selecting uh, algorithms for optimization. And now it's starting to generate our pipelines. So uh, um, under normal circumstances, uh, for instance, if you're a data scientist and you do this um, manually, uh, this could take hours or weeks. But with Auto AI, we're able to train our first two pipelines in a matter of seconds. So the system continues to run until the process is finished. Um, and this could take uh, anywhere from three to five minutes up to 10 or 20 minutes, depending on um, how much data you're using and how your computer's running. Um, and uh, let me move forward here. So here uh, we can see uh, hyperparameter optimization. We can see our pipeline three uh, is as it's running this pipeline is um, uh, optimizing uh, for ROC AUC. Um, you can also see the uh, uh, enhancements um, being tested for each pipeline. Now we're uh, working through some feature engineering here. And again, this will be uh, as you work through this at home, it, I would say this probably takes about three to five minutes. This per uh, we have pipeline here. And again, we selected ROC AUC for uh, optimization. Um, so when it's finished running, we'll have a total of eight pipelines. Um, as you can see here, well, it's a little cut off. So pipeline three um, is our top ranked pipeline. Uh, and we can see here, uh, we have uh, XGB classifier enhancement. Um, we have uh, feature transformers. We have uh, univariate feature selection and fe feature agglomeration. 
We can also look at the other um, pipelines as well. Um, so if we look at um, pipeline seven and pipeline eight, we have uh, feature transformers, we have square. Uh, we also have principal component analysis. And again, we have four pipelines that um, uh, use univariate feature selection. And then we have two pipelines that use feature agglomeration. And then we have four pipelines here um, that use the XGB uh, classifier. So, and I just um, put examples here, some more views, but our, our top ranking pipeline was pipeline eight. It was ranked first. Uh, it was uh, have optimized with uh, ROC, AUC. Um, we have HPO1, FE, and HPO2 enhancements. Um, and we can select this pipeline and learn more about it. Uh, so here's a metric chart showing all of the different pipelines. Model name accuracy, so um, pipeline eight. Uh, we can, we can, we're look, right now we're looking at the cross validation set. So my, pipeline eight um, has an accuracy of uh, 83.8.58. Um, we can look at uh, a lot of other uh, more in the weeds than um, uh, a, a developer would need, but would, are, is uh, really great information for a data scientist. Um, so we're going to select our, our top ranking pipeline that has uh, optimized for ROC. The algorithm um, here is the random forest classifier. Um, so we're going to take a look. Sorry about that. Oh, I'm, I apologize. Uh, we can look at the holdout data as well. That's what I was trying to show here. So here we can look at the holdout data. So if, we, if in the holdout data, the top ranking pipeline was pipeline two, we can look at the metric chart for our holdout data pipelines as well. And we can, um, uh, we're, we're gonna look at our uh, cross validation uh, pipelines. So pipeline eight was our top ranking pipeline. I'm gonna just go back here and make sure there's no questions, okay. Um, I want to make sure I get through all of this for you. I had a little technical trouble in the beginning. So um, within this pipeline, we can look at the model evaluation. We can view our confusion matrix. We can also look at the precision recall curve. We can look at the uh, model information, the model transformations, and the feature importance. So uh, this, this tells us the um, ranking in uh, order of importance of the different features that um, we tested for, um, the data that we fed it. So it looks like sex was the most important feature uh, in predicting whether or not someone survived. Um, so going back to uh, our model evaluation, um, or you, you can be in any view really, within our top ranking, our first ranked pipeline, uh, you can click save as, and this is really great. So we can save this as a model, which we can then deploy. We can also save this as a notebook, which we're gonna do a session on um, in the next few weeks, um, covering Jupyter Notebooks and how we can uh, uh, take our, our notebook from here, but what we're gonna look at today is, is our, uh, our custom model and deploying it. So um, uh, a lot of the model names and um, pieces that you're seeing, so I didn't have to change my name, this was the model name that it gave me, so I just kept it and saved it. And then once you save it here, it will tell you model saved successfully. And then we can view it in the project. So we can access it just from clicking here. We can also uh, uh, access it from our um, uh, project overview. Um, so uh, here is our model. We can view the summary, uh, input schema, um, 
Uh, so there's some other, we can view the evaluation, which we don't have any yet. We can also view the lineage that we don't have any yet either. But the really great part about here is that we have an area for deployment. So right now our model is not deployed, but we can change that. We can add a deployment. So uh, we can click add deployment. I just gave the uh, deployment the same name as um, my uh, experiment that I'm running in my project. Um, and as you can see here, it's already selected for a web service. Um, and then what you'll see is uh, your deployment initializing. And again, this takes about 35 minutes. Um, Once your uh, deployment is ready, this is what you will see, that it's ready. And then what you can do is um, you can click on the name uh, or you can click view. Um, so here we're looking at, uh, I'm, I'm, we're clicking on our deployment and getting more information for it. So here we can see our deployment and some information about it, when it was last modified, when it was created. Um, we can also get some information about the model down here, which was a little cut off. Um, here also you can click view. So here's some of that model information, the name, the ID. And if you see the next tab over, we have implementation. So this part is really great. So we can see the scoring endpoint here. Um, authorization, you'll need to create a bearer token. We have some Watson machine learning authentication documentation. Uh, really easy steps for creating your bearer token. Um, and then this should you find your machine learning instance ID. So essentially you'll need your endpoint your bear token and your machine learning instance ID. And then we have some, um, we can all, uh, sorry, we have some code snippets here in some different languages. So um, this is really helpful. This gives you all the code that you need. And then again, you just need to customize your bear token and your machine learning instance ID. So we have uh, curl, Java, JavaScript and Python. Uh, we also have Scala. So here's what this looks like. And it shows you where you need to put in your tokens. So here's our instance ID that we'll need to change that here. And then here's the really great part. Normally when um, you build an API, uh, you need to test it, right? And Postman is really amazing for, do amazing for doing that. But an, easier, an e even easier way of doing that without needing your machine learning instance ID without needing your bearer token is you can test it right within the test uh, tab within your model. So I put my information in here and I wasn't on the Titanic, obviously. However, um, if I were, uh, our custom model is gonna tell me whether or not I would have survived. So I selected that I'd be in first class, wishful thinking, my name, uh, I'm female, my age, whether or not I have siblings. So I'm saying I'm, I'm bringing one sibling or spouse. I'm not bringing any kids and I'm paying $75 for my fare. So then I can click predict. And what I get back is a JSON response. So congratulations to me, I survived. Remember that binary classifier that we were talking about at the beginning, zero or one. So I survived with a 99.9%, 95% probability. Uh, some other really great things. So for instance, we can provide the input using this form. We can also provide input as a, a JSON request. So let's say I wanted to use Postman. I could do that and here's what that data looks like. Uh, then send a request to my model um, to uh, get, get my prediction response back. And this is what it looks like. So congratulations, you have just created your first uh, custom machine learning model with Watson Studio Auto AI. So you should all feel very proud, uh, developers and data scientists alike. Uh, this, is, this is bringing us all in the same playing field where we can 
um, really do a lot more with their data much more quickly. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so this is uh, these are the resources that I mentioned earlier. Um, again, I'm going to post uh, in the in the um, I apologize in the chat um, for all of you as well. I'm going to repost all of the links that I posted at the beginning. You can also um, view them here. I'm sure there will be a way to send some sort of follow up or something of some kind. Um, but I'm going to uh, post everything in the chat again so that you can all have access to them. So here is one. Here is. So here's the workshop slides. Here's the link for creating um, a cloud account. Here is the link to the GitHub repository. And then, oops. If this was helpful for you and you would like to attend some more workshops, um, please feel free uh, to join our IBM Developer Austin channel. We have a lot of great um, uh, IBM developer advocates as well as um, uh, federated advocate IBMers. So these are data scientists, developers, other people within IBM that want to share um, products they're working on, do workshops on things they're interested in, share cool stuff they've been working on, as well as people from the community. Um, you can feel free to follow us there. Again, here is my information. You can follow me at jwritten on all social media platforms. Um, I am uh, starting to live stream most of my content as well, so you can access it and view it at any time. And then here's some of the IBM developer social media links um, that you can follow us on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, um, and again, the IBM developer meetup. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you all learned something new. Um, I hope you were able to see how quick and easy you're able to get things up uh, and running. Um, anyone at any experience level is uh, more than capable of, of running through this workshop and uh, creating their own custom models. Um, we've seen a lot of cool projects at a lot of hackathons in the past few months of people who are very, very early uh, developers um, just learning and uh, uh, learning the ropes. Um, and with Google Scholar and Fraggle and a few other resources, um, they're really able to learn how to clean their data sets and get some things together and play around with Watson Studio and create some really cool models uh, for some really cool projects. So I just want to thank you all again for coming. Um, I, I really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. And I hope you all have a really great rest of your week. And um, I hope to see you all soon.